Well, good morning. Uh, thanks for uh, joining us for morning prayer and Bible reading at Grangetown Baptist. Uh, if you were expecting Ian, uh, I'm Sean Price, a member at the church. Uh, we'll begin with a uh, word of prayer. Uh, Father, we uh, thank you for this day. God, we thank you for the sunshine here in Cardiff this morning. Uh, Lord, we thank you that your uh, hand is upon us and your spirit is at work uh, throughout the world. We praise you that your mercies are indeed new every morning. Uh, bless us this day. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. So our reading today is Psalm 32. Psalm 32. A Maskil of David. Blessed is the one whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man against whom the Lord counts no iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no deceit. For when I kept silent, my bones wasted away through my groaning all day long. For day and night your hand was heavy upon me. My strength was dried up as by the heat of summer. I acknowledged my sin before you, and I did not cover my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. Therefore, let everyone who is godly offer prayer to you at a time when you may be found. Surely in the rush of great waters, they shall not reach him. You are a hiding place for me. You preserve me from trouble. You surround me with shouts of deliverance. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you with my eye upon you. Be not like a horse or a mule without understanding, which must be curbed with bit and bridle, or it will not stay near you. Many are the sorrows of the wicked, but steadfast love surrounds the one who trusts in the Lord. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice, O righteous, and shout for joy, all you upright in heart. May the Lord indeed bless the reading of his word. Um, I've entitled our uh, talk today, The Wise Path of Forgiveness. Uh, this psalm has a very uh, important place in the Christian tradition and Christian spirituality. It was a favorite psalm of uh, Martin Luther as uh, well as Augustine. Um, it's quoted by Paul in Romans chapter 4, uh, verses uh, 7 and 8. This is the second of what's sometimes called the uh, penitential psalms. And the word penitent simply means uh, to come before God in a state seeking forgiveness, uh, to indeed uh, be sorry uh, for one's sins. Uh, this psalm is also quite often linked to Psalm 51, uh, where we have the heading there about David and Bathsheba. And so here we have David writing about forgiveness. Uh, Charles Spurgeon said of this psalm, if Psalm 1 pictures the tree in full growth, so there in Psalm 1 we have the tree planted by the rivers of waters whose root do not, does not wither. So there we have a tree in full growth. Uh, this psalm depicts its first planting and watering. In this psalm we have uh, David saying, blessed are those who indeed are forgiven. Uh, to walk in the way of the righteous and the blameless, one's sins must be forgiven. So let's take a look at verses uh, 1 and 2. Uh, here we have two blessings. Blessed is the one whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered, and blessed is the man against whom the Lord counts no uh, iniquity. And these blessings are all throughout the Psalms. Blessing, uh, beatitude, some commentators or interpreters use the word happy here to interpret the Hebrew. Happy is the one whose sins are forgiven. And if your sins have been forgiven and you know that joy inside you, you know the happiness uh, that comes with forgiveness. Uh, but the way this is worded here is quite interesting. So quite often in the Psalms um, or in the Old Testament, Blessing comes to those who uh, do certain things. So, for instance, refer again to Psalm 1. Uh, blessed is the one who walks not in the counsel of the godly. So, walking. Who stands not in the way of sinners. Another action. Who sits 
not in the seat of the scornful. So there you see sit, walk, stand, three types of actions there. Here, uh, how does the blessing happen? Is given as a gift. Blessed are you when your sins are forgiven. And uh, this type of gift uh, is us being on the receiving end of forgiveness, not that we did something to earn this blessing. Uh, this type of forgiveness only comes as a free gift. And uh, this is perhaps why Paul referred to these verses in Romans 4. Uh, Romans 4, Paul is teaching that when God treats us as righteous, it is his gift apart from what we deserve. It is his grace that we can be blessed and be happy that our sins are forgiven. So again, blessing here is not, necess is not financial. Uh, when your sins are forgiven, you are blessed and never shall be. Uh, whether you are rich or poor, sick or sorrowful, whether you are in lockdown or out, um, if your sins are forgiven, you are blessed indeed. And so to hear by the inspiration of the Spirit in the words of the Bible that there is forgiveness uh, to be found, this is indeed joy unspeakable. So again, blessing here is not given to uh, the law keeper, uh, for then it would never come to us, right? We're all lawbreakers. Um, rather, uh, it's given to those whom God has bestowed his grace upon. Um, so the first part here is the blessed man. Uh, now let's take a look at uh, verses 3 to 5. For when I kept silent, my bones wasted away through my groaning all day long. For day and night, your hand was heavy upon me. My strength was dried up as by the heat of summer. I acknowledged my sin to you, and I did not cover my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave my iniquity and sin. So I'm going to call this section here uh, the conditions of forgiveness. Um, they describe the struggle in which the psalmist's uh, life has brought him to this point. Uh, here we have him literally uh, wasting away. Uh, there's something bottled up in his side of him. He says, I kept silent. And if you've ever uh, struggled with sin, if you, as we all have, if you have struggled with uh, God being gracious to us, um, if you've kept this inside of you, uh, you know the inner turmoil um, this can cause. Uh, again, if we link this psalm to Psalm 51, we're thinking of David and Bathsheba, where we have a murderer, uh, we have an adulterer who is keeping it inside until it is brought to light by the prophet uh, Nathan. Uh, someone once described David's anguish here as the inner misery of the lacerated heart. So here we have a heart who is burning, but it's kept inside. And so all of us can identify with David's reluctance here. Um, no one likes to admit when you're wrong, uh, no one relishes the thought of confession, uh, far less uh, something as serious as adultery and murder. Uh, facing our, our thoughts, whether it's moral, uh, whether it's otherwise, is seriously discomforting. Uh, but here we have good news. Um, this psalm is not primarily about the anguish of sin, but about the forgiveness that is given by God. And so release can only come through Acknowledging to God the wrong within David. Uh, look at verse 5 with me. He says, um, I acknowledged my sin to you, and I did not cover my iniquity. So the sin is no longer covered by David. Right? So if you remember that story in David, um, he's hiding the sin until Nathan says, you are the one. So he's covering but look at verse 1. What happens in verse 1? We have that same word here. Blessed is the one whose sins are covered. And this is a very different kind of covering that God gives. God's covering is not, I'm going to hide your sin. God's covering is, it is covered by the blood of Jesus. Right? The sin is no longer yours. It is taken by Christ's work on the cross. Um, so now let's take a look at verses uh, 6 to 10. So we begin with the blessing. Next we have uh, the man who is withering away, who then acknowledges his sin. And what happens? His sin is forgiven when it is acknowledged before God. 
In verse 6 is a bit of transition. We have the word therefore. Uh, so if you see the word therefore in the Bible, it's always good to ask, what is it there for? So a transition here. Uh, therefore, let everyone who is godly offer prayer to you at a time when you may be found. And so when you have received forgiveness of sin, um, what do you want to do? Um, you want to share that with others. You want others to know that forgiveness can indeed be found. In verse 6, um, the godly are invited to pray at a time of distress. Right? Surely in the rush of waters they shall not reach them. So here we have some kind of trouble. And so when there's trouble abounding, um, if you are blessed by the forgiveness of sin, there is no trouble that can become between you and God. In verses 9 and 10, again, just tell us what happens to the wicked or those who do not know Christ. There's trouble, right? There is um, lack of discernment. There's lack of direction as a horse or mule that cannot be directed. When we know Christ, we know true north and where that points to. Verse 10, many are the sorrows of the wicked, but steadfast love surrounds the one who trusts in the Lord. Um, as we know, Jesus said the rain falls on the just and the unjust. Because we are blessed by forgiveness does not mean that um, all that happens in our life is going to be necessarily happy, but we can know true inner happiness through the joy that is given by our Lord. And finally, verse 11. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice, O righteous. Shout for joy, all who are upright in heart. So this last verse here is sometimes called a benediction, right? So quite often in a church, we'll say a benediction prayer, kind of a blessing as you go. But this is an interesting one in that it says, Be glad and rejoice, O righteous. So who are the righteous ones here? The righteous ones are the ones whose sins are forgiven. So those um, who are given forgiveness in verses 1 and 2 are called to be joyful, um, to thank God for their place before the Lord. Um, similarly, in the New Testament, Paul, in light of what God has done for him in Christ, sums up the life to which he and all who share their faith are called. Philippians 4.4, 4, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. So above all, the forgiveness that God grants us through Christ um, is a source for our ongoing confidence, um, for the same God will never abandon us. Um, I'll end with Romans 8, 32. He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? And what did God give us? Um, what was the cost of this forgiveness? It was indeed his son uh, who died on the cross for the forgiveness of our sins. Um, so today, as you go about your day, uh, remember that we are indeed blessed as followers of Jesus uh, because our sins have been forgiven. Let us close in prayer. Uh, Father, we uh, just thank you for this time. Uh, we thank you that we um, have been called and adopted as sons and daughters of the King of King, kings and Lord of lords. Uh, we pray as we go throughout our day that we will acknowledge you uh, before others, that we will uh, just walk in step with the Spirit. Uh, we thank you for uh, your work you've done for us on the cross and pray that um, you would be with us this day forevermore. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. So again, thanks for joining, and uh, it's been good to be with you all. Have a good day.